What's going on, everyone? So the Lakers had a very successful draft, in my opinion, last night. It's going to be really interesting to see how these players shape up. Uh, in the first round with the 17th pick, they get Jalen hood uh, In the second round with the 40th pick, they get Maxwell Lewis, which that could turn out to be one of the bigger steals in the draft. He was heavily projected in the first round. But in this video, I want to talk about the two two-way players and the Exhibit 10 players that the Lakers brought in, because I really do think that all three of these guys have a lot of potential to at least kind of be in the development pool for the Los Angeles Lakers, and maybe even one or two of these guys potentially getting a shot uh, on the actual roster. Not saying like starting level or heavy minutes or anything like that, but could potentially uh, make their way into just some minutes, right? And I want to start with my favorite of the three in Colin Castleton. Colin Castleton, I really like right? Uh, he went undrafted. Lakers love undrafted guys. They love undrafted white guys, uh, which is even better. 23 years old, so it kind of fits the standard of like, you know, an Alex Caruso and Austin Reeves, like getting guys that are a little more disciplined, a little older, a little more um, just mature, right? Have a little more refound to their game. This is a guy that I really believe could maybe play some minutes for the Lakers this season. I could see him coming in and providing just some quality uh, stability at the center position. Uh, he kind of reminds me of like a Zach Collins, kind of, uh, would probably be uh, the, the best comparison that at least pops into my head immediately, uh, which... He would be great in a backup role, right? If you could go get Zach Collins. 6'11 size, uh, got good intangibles, can pass the ball, do a little bit of everything. Uh, this is a guy that gave 16 points per game, 7, almost 8 rebounds per game, and 3 assists, shot 50% from the floor. Uh, this is a guy that played several years in college, which, again, that's what you what the Lakers like, right? The Lakers like guys that play you know, 3, 4, 5 years as undrafted guys that can come in and make an impact right away. Good free throw shooter. Uh, he solid uh, from, again, the post game. Uh, Three-point shooting, not his best suit. Uh, he's not really a great three-point shooter. He doesn't take a lot of them. He's more of like at the rim, but can be a quality shot blocker. I mean, this guy averaged three blocks and a steal per game uh, this past year. So this is a guy, 31 minutes, 50% from the field, 13.3% from three. But like I said, he takes very few of those. 73% uh, from the free throw line, which is, again, what you want from a center. You want a center that could shoot the free throws, right? Because you don't want the a guy where you got to take him out the game late because can't knock down free throws or, you know, teams are trying to get back into the game. So they, you know, start giving the little tic-tac fouls. So that way this guy gets the free throw line so they can get back into the game. Good free throw shooter. That's what you want to see. He even has shot 82%, 83% from the free throw line. So if he can kind of get back to the 80s, that would be wonderful. Uh, and then, again, just, just a guy that can make some plays um, that you can run through on the post, takes care of the ball, doesn't foul too much, can give you quality production. And so this is a guy that I could see coming in and just play his role. Right, this is a guy that's not going to come in. Colin's not going to come in and and expect to be the starter night one. He's not going to come in and expect to, you know, take over games. And he's going to want thirty shots and all that. No, he's a guy that's going to come in. He's going to play whatever role that is. If it's ten minutes one night, if it's five minutes the next night, if it's thirty minutes the next night, he will do that. Six eleven, two hundred and forty pounds. So he's got a good size, good frame, can block shots, got a bit of athleticism at the center position. He is a guy that could very, very well uh, be like our third big maybe on, on some nights. Uh, if not, maybe even the backup, right? Especially depending on what they do with uh, Mo Bamba, right? The Lakers are looking to potentially trade or even just let go of Mo Bamba. If that ends up happening, I think they could bring in Colin. I still want a veteran big. Go get a veteran big, uh, whoever that may be. Brooke Lopez would be just, you know, chef kiss. But whatever, get a get a veteran big, a guy that can come in, maybe start, uh, come off the bench, play quality minutes, whatever. But then have Colin as like your young development big that can kind of come in, provide quality minutes, isn't going to do too much, isn't going to play out of position, isn't going to uh, try to 
you know, be showboating or fancy out there on the court, could be a real lob threat. All of these things is what the Lakers could really use. Uh, obviously, it'd be nice if we could get a floor stretching big, but it's not. We need somebody that can bang. We need somebody that can rebound, defend at the rim. Uh, you know, bull, not get bullied around by bigger guys. He's hard nosed, tough kid. I love this move. I genuinely love this move. Um, but next up, we have uh, Demo Hodges. Uh, now he. If I'm being honest, I'm not super familiar with. Um, 24 years old, 6'4 height. Again, older type fits the mold of the Lakers. Um, I have I did watch a couple Missouri games, but not enough to like really give you a good pulse on the type of player he is. But the reason he was brought in, he shot 40% from three uh, for Missouri. So he is a shooter, uh, and that is what the Lakers need. This is another guy two-way that could potentially come in as just like a shooting threat off the bench, something along those lines. Um, he shot 47 and a half, almost 48% from three, uh, or from the field, 40% from three, uh, 74% from the free throw line, uh, got four rebounds, one and a half assists, a half a block, 2.6 steals per game. Two-way type, uh, just guard. Right, which isn't bad. Uh, he averaged just under 15 points per game, and again for his career, he averaged two steals per game. So this is a guy that's got a good nose, good instincts for the ball, a guy that can go and guard multiple positions with the size and his length, uh, and knock down the three ball, which is important. Not saying that he's going to translate and shoot 40% from three in the NBA, but can he be a 37, 38% three-point shooter? If he can, and he can do that consistently, then he could absolutely be a guy that comes in and maybe get some quality minutes on, on just shooting. Mal, uh, Malik Beasley. The Lakers are looking to move off of Beasley or looking to maybe release Beasley uh, to just get off of his salary. Hodge could be a guy that could come in and kind of provide some of that role. If he could shoot you know, 38 to 40% from three uh, as a rookie, that would be remarkable, right? I mean... It sounds tough, but it's not like impossible, especially with the team with like LeBron and Anthony Davis, where he's going to get a lot of open looks, right? And if he can just knock down the open looks, then he's going to to have some success. Uh, again, play some hard nosed defense, Lakers. That's what they're about, playing some defense, and we may be able to have found a three and D style uh, type of guard. Which, again, this free agency class is not great. You know, like I see so many people that want the Lakers, we need to get shooting, we need to get uh, three and Ds, we need to get, you know, sizable wings and an elite center and all that stuff. And it's like, where are we getting all that from, right? And we're not the only team. You have teams like Dallas and the Suns and several other teams that are that need all the same things we need and more, but they can provide more minutes, uh, the same amount of money, Right, like if we go and we get a guy that comes in, right? Like take Brooke Lopez for example. Like how many minutes is Brooke Lopez going to play for us compared to a team like Dallas? Right, like Dallas could pay Brooke Lopez, and Brooke Lopez would probably start, and he'd probably play thirty plus minutes a game. We're on the Lakers. The Lakers are still going to probably run Anthony Davis at the five at points. He's probably not going to be solely at the four. Uh, so how many minutes is he going to play again? Like, you know, it just a big question. Maybe it does work. Maybe he does play. I would love Brooke Lopez. I think that that's fine. But again, like if we can find these gems like a Hodge, who he's a guy that can knock down three balls efficiently and effectively and play defense, right? Well, now we don't need a Seth Curry. Right now, we might not need uh, one of these other guys that may be available in the market. It's like, well, we already got that, and we got him younger, and we got a guy that could grow and develop under the Lakers banner. Um, and if he is really good, then he becomes a trade chip, right? And the Lakers could maybe use him to go leverage to go get maybe an upgraded version or whatever, right? There, it gives the Lakers flexibility and options, which is what you want if you're the Lakers, right? And then lastly is Alex Fudge. Um, guy, quality, come in, uh, he's on the Exhibit 10, uh, 6'9", so sizable wing that can guard and play multiple positions. He is a question mark and more of a development guy. 
than uh, the other two, in my opinion. He's a guy that uh, definitely needs to work on his shot. He's 23% from three, so not really a great three-point shooter. He's kind of, he could be like our, um, like winning Gabriel replacement, you know, play small ball center, play the four, uh, defend, solid defender, good size, good strength. Uh, again, not somebody that's really going to stand out and jump on the page. To me, this is a guy that the Lakers probably brought in and liked and said, let's, let's try to bring him in, see what he can do. And then I could see them maybe signing him to the G League team and potentially, you know, working his way up the ranks. That's probably what we're going to see from uh, Alex. Now, could something crazy happen and he turns into like some, you know, Jared Vanderbilt type guy? That would be great, right? Like, can he be elite defensively, right? Even if he can't shoot great, like, I would you hate having two Jared Vanderbilts on the roster? I wouldn't. You know, obviously, it, it sucks that Jared Vanderbilt isn't a 38% three-point shooter or something. But still, you know, you, you, we need guys that can defend multiple positions, that have good size, that have good intangibles. I think Alex is a guy that can come in and do that, right? He's a guy that I do believe can can make an impact, at least on the defensive end. Personally, I don't see him actually making the roster. I think the other two guys, especially Castleton, Castleton is, in my opinion, has the best shot of actually being on the roster opening night. Um, Hodge, I think, could go either way. I think it'll depend on how well he plays in Summer League. If he's really good in Summer League, then I could see him potentially making a spot. Uh, again, he's not going to play heavy minutes or anything like that. Just kind of come in and be a specialist. Kind of like, think of like... Uh, like Matt Ryan, right, last year, where he kind of just came in, played spotty minutes here and there, um, but could shoot the ball. Like, if we could get somebody like that, where he's just going to play a few minutes here and there. Um, but again, Alex Fudge, uh, he was a project. It, it wasn't any surprise that he went undrafted. Uh, that was kind of expected. Uh, he didn't really have any major standouts, but good athlete, uh, good wingspan. He's got a seven-foot wingspan, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just could be a solid defensive guy. Again, my best comparison off the top of my head would be Jared Vanderbilt, right? A guy that come in, lock down, guard the best player on the other team, and really kind of just, you know, make an impact and, and maybe get some minutes just solely on the defensive end, right? That could be what it is, right? Which the Lakers could use that, right? Like, we've talked about the possibility of, say, like a Stanley Johnson, Coming in, just a sizable wing that could guard multiple positions, play multiple positions, have switchability, block some shots, get some steals, do the hustle plays, do the dirty work, right? That's what we could get here, right? Like, instead of going and getting a Stanley Johnson or something like that, we could bring in this young guy that could be a grown, developed guy type thing. Kind of like it. But anyway, as always, this is the discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? of our uh, undrafted free agents. Uh, what, who are your favorites? What do you like? What do you think? What do you don't like? Do you think any of these guys have a chance to make the roster? Do you think uh, none of them will? Do you, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me know down in the comment section below.